My name is Jane and I'm from Washington, D.C. I am a performer and a budding lifestyle expert. My style influences, I love the 80s and I love the 70s, so anything that comes from that era kind of looks like that, stretchy and tight and shiny. I'm like a solid gold dancer, but it's 2011. That's me. Uh, I know it sounds corny, but music is like a soundtrack. Like whenever I want to go out, there's a song I want to hear. Whenever I'm just in the mood to stay in the house and relax, there's a song I want to hear. Um, music is like the backdrop to everything that you do. So, um, you know, all your emotions are com completely tied to the type of music that you listen to at that time. So, it's kind of how I correlate it. Yeah, I think as far as an artist is concerned, their fashion is um, directly like a derivative of their personality and therefore like an extension of who they are, just like their music is. So sometimes you can just look at a person and say, oh my god, they're going to do this type of music. And it might surprise you, but it might be spot on. So, you know, as, as far as being a performer is concerned, what you wear is like that ultimate expression or that first like window into what you're about to do on stage. So. Because uh, <laughs> I think of a, a lot of hip hop culture and the style that is in, included in that has to do with what's going on at the time and what's going on in the hood. Back in the day, it used to be, you know, like the kids from the Bronx would have on the Kangos and all that other stuff, but nowadays it's more of an expression of what you aspire to be. So you got like Kanye West with the gold chains and the tight Armani suits and the pushed up sleeves like he's on Miami Vice. So um, as far as hip hop and, and fashion are concerned, it's just more of a sign of the times. People want to be prosperous right now, so people look to artists to kind of give them that glam lifestyle, even if they're, art if they're rappers. And back in the day, it used to be a more organic feel and kind of grimy and more about the struggle. Now it's about after the struggle. Well, my like I said before, my dad is from Compton, so I like like N.W.A. and Too Short, and I like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, but I also like the Beat Nuts, and I like uh, Tribe Called Quest, and I love Q-Tip, um, and then I like Big Sean, and I like Gucci Mane, so it's just, it runs the gambit of, you know, whatever I feel that day is who I love. I'm a music head, so it's a tough question. But I love jazz. I actually went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts, so we learned a lot about jazz in high school. So of course Duke Ellington is one of my favorites, but probably my all-time favorite is um, Billie Holiday, because I just love her voice, so um, I'm a big jazz fan. I would think that style is considerably more laid back nowadays, as far as jazz culture is concerned. Back in the day, it used to be very dressed up, very cotton club, very, you know, Harlem Renaissance is what I think about when I think about jazz artists of the past. Right now, I think that they're all just allowed to kind of express themselves outwardly a little bit more. So it, it's, it's tough to say because they just, you know, they run the gambit of, of style. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to not only pay homage to a, a culture and a music that we're kind of losing grip on right now. Not only that, but it's a way to kind of like bring forth that thought to people who are younger and may not have had that experience. I know I was a kid in the 90s, so I kind of know where it's coming from and I understand everything about it, but there might be a younger generation and even an older generation who want to have that interest in that that we need to bring it to. So it's definitely a dope project as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to know, are you really ready for some super dynamite soul?